hanging out here in the shop tonight with Jeff Abel. We're going to teach you a little something about sump systems. And those of you guys who are from the dirt modified world know that the big blocks have what's called a dry sump. This is an oil tank right here, okay? And you can see the lines run through a filter, then up to the front where there is a pump. So we're going to show you this and actually talk a little bit about it. Jeff Abel, nice enough to spend some time with us. We aired this before the finale this weekend, and it's going to be a good one, too, uh, as we have Tyler Shulik and Mike McVetta just two points apart in the ISMA finale this weekend at Evans Mills. Well, we got a lot of work to do tonight, don't we? We do, and we uh, did a lot of maintenance over the weekend. We're kind of in the middle of it now and everything there, but uh, caught, kind of caught us at a good time there and everything to kind of, you know, go over everything a little bit and explain as best I can. And like I said, mm -hmm. there's no area of expertise for me, but I can, uh, I'll do my best to um, explain what we have going on in these super modifieds. Mm -hmm. Now the difference between the supers and like the dirt modifieds is the sump tank is behind the driver there. Um, why do we put it here versus behind? Is it just why we want the weight and stuff or is it more protected this way? Yeah, most, most of the supers you'll see have an oil tank that's kind of external on the car and on the left side and we're, you know, a 67, 68% left side weight that race much. car. So yes, that much. Um, anywhere from 65 to 68 and our rule is actually maximum 68. So Okay. Um, to get to that point, you have a lot of weight down this side and then just packaging and everything so you don't run lines. But mm -hmm. some, some cars do run their oil tanks either up front of the car, things like that for oh. weight balance. And um, you can place them wherever you want to by rule essentially, but most of them you'll see them right behind the engine or, or uh, okay. just in front of it. How much oil is in this tank? Uh, this one is technically an eight quart uh, tank, so two gallon tank. Um, and then the entire system usually holds somewhere between 10 to 14 quarts or so throughout the, uh, between the okay. engine lines, um, if you run an oil cooler, things like that. So, um, but I know some cars run as low as eight quarts in the entire system, some wow. up to 14 or 15 quarts. And of course, for the standard race car with the baffles and the oil pan that doesn't have, that's about six usually, right? Yeah, usually run through, exactly. And uh, yeah, most of them that run a wet sump, it's usually five or six quarts. I believe they're, they're usually running through there. Okay, so you can see the lines. This is the out, this is what goes out, and this is what comes back in, right? Exactly. So this actually, this, uh, this other smaller line is for a... Uh, um, aeration system so that bleeds any air out of the oil and everything and then oh. back to the uh, the tank there so you have a, a feed or a part that comes out of the bottom where it's drawing the oil out of there and then this oh, is yeah, returned. Oh yeah, can see it right there. Yep, and then inside the tank if you could take this apart um, there's actually some baffles and things inside so it keeps the oil moving around in a circle, keeps oh. it from uh, hitting anything um, that might be um, like a flat surface or anything, so mm -hmm. it doesn't uh, create any air bubbles or anything like that with it. So these are a pretty uniquely designed tank and everything to mm -hmm. uh, to do that. So everything's done for a reason, obviously. And when they go on like that, it seems to me it would be more of a consistent flow. It's exactly right. right. Keeping flow, keeping um, keeping the oil moving and everything is a big deal also for heat and everything there. So, okay. um, But um, yeah, as soon as we fire these things up, they get going, that oil level drops significantly because everything's running through the engine and doing right. that. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty important factor to have that right. Here's where the oil filter is, but this is basically just a case where this is the actual filter, right? Exactly. So this is uh, similar to what you'd find on a lot of cars. Um, your cars driving around, if they run a cartridge filter, even if you run a, a spin-on filter, which a lot of cars run. Oh, the run. old see-through ones, right? Yeah. Exactly. So a lot of Toyotas and uh, different things like that. Today, you pull out a filter, it'll look like this. It'll be a cardboard piece where this is a stainless steel, um, usually a little bit bigger micron and everything with it. But um, all the oil is filtered as it goes through and then comes back through the center of it. So any debris or anything we might find through there, we're usually looking right through these little crevices and everything with that. And this one actually oh. just pulled out and we were letting it uh, kind of soak for a while and doing that. Okay. So, um, but yeah, get anything. And by this point in the season, you really don't want to be seeing uh, any anything. Yes. There's no more break in, there's no more anything like that. So beginning of the season, you usually get some little small aluminum pieces, things like that from mm -hmm. piston wear and things like that, just, you know, setting in. But um, this point, by the time you pull it, you really want to see pure, clean oil and, and nice, clean filter. Yeah, and you don't have to cut it apart like the like the, the, the typical spin-on filters that a lot of teams use, depending on what they have. So. Exactly. Yeah. This piece here is this is just a case. I mean, do we replace this every so often, or this one we've had for a long time now. Um, as long as everything's maintained, you don't put a lot of debris through it. Um, doesn't get a lot of scratches or anything like that. You can keep running that piece. The actual element itself will replace that. Uh, maybe a couple times during the season, okay. but as long as everything's staying nice and clean, it'll go as long as um, it's clear and everything. But as soon as you have any issues or if there's any 
any problem towards the end of your seeing debris, you wanna pretty much get rid of it and start fresh if you can. Okay, so as we follow the line here that comes out, this is the freshly filtered oil, it comes right in here, and basically it comes right here to this pump. Is this what, is this where it ends up going right here? Yeah, this, this system, you can run it a few different ways. We actually have a couple different spots that we filter. Um, this main one though actually comes back around, goes through, and then this is the return, so it actually goes through this way and flows back into the oil tank. So I see. we like to make sure that the oil that's going back into the tank is nice and filtered as well too. Oh, I see, rather um, than coming out. Exactly, and then we've had different versions this year. We've done that, but some people like to run um, before it goes to the pump or anything like that, they'll run a filter through that way. So there's a few different ways that you can run the whole system, but okay. um, we prefer this way just so everything is uh, nice and filtered into the tank. Stages here, you can see what I'm looking at um, here. Yeah. Um, what, what the, looking at the silver parts, right? Yeah, so this is this is gonna be a four stage pump. Um, we've actually, we've run five stage pump, everything like that. Um, when we had some issues earlier on the season, we actually had to switch to a different pump, which this is a um, really well built pump and a pump we've um, run for a long time. So. Um, this one is considered a four stage pump. You've got three scavenges and one uh, pressure port on it. Um, you can run a five stage pump where you're actually going to run four scavenges, which is where the oil is getting sucked out of the engine. Um, is that some, more to balance the, the amount of oil on each side, the scavengers? The biggest thing is just to draw the oil out of the oil pan. Um, with this performance, you don't want your crankshaft running through any amount of oil or anything. So when these that's things true. are up to RPM and everything like that, there's barely any oil that's in the oil pan. It's all getting sucked right out there. And some will run a scavenge in the, uh, the engine valley and everything for that. Um, a lot of teams just run it basically into the oil pan itself. And is that one of the advantages of this versus uh, the bigger pan with the baffles is that it does allow it to stay more consistent side to side? Yeah, it's... Um, there and is, also less resistance on the crank, it's right? It's the biggest part of it is less... Re because with a wet sump system, that crankshaft um, oils itself and has to run through that oil, it, it um, definitely brings the horsepower down a little mm -hmm. bit. This, these engines with the dry sump are just built for pure horsepower and things like that. Um, there's debate on, on longevity one way or another. You could say that because it's running with a wet sump running through oil and doing that, it's putting more strain on the engine. These ones have less. There's also debate on how it oils and everything like that with it. But um, typically you're getting around the similar amount of laps, I think, with, uh, you know, depending on whichever setup you have. And it's all about efficiency and basically drag. So if that oil, if that crank is going through a lot of oil versus a little bit, that is going to rob you some power, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. These are, these are super modifieds are built for pure power, everything. No, no transmissions, no anything, direct drive and uh, <laughs> dry sump. So all, all horsepower right to the ground. Make sure to subscribe, guys. And if you have some questions, because uh, this was just kind of the 101 yeah. on, on sump systems. But again, if, if you're from the dirt modified world, you, you've seen these oil tanks and you've seen the lines and you've seen how they do it there. So uh, if you have some other questions or if there's something you'd like us to do, send us a comment or leave us something here on Facebook and we'd be happy to, uh, to investigate that and, and go maybe a, a 201 class yeah. uh, next time and get a little bit more specific. I appreciate this, man. This was nice. I've always, always kind of wondered about this myself. And uh, now you guys know how it happens. So good luck this weekend. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Again, ISMA, MSS, the season finale for the points. They've got a race later uh, at Caraway that's a non-point race. But again, it's two points at the front between Tyler Schulich and former champion Mike McVetta. So get your butts on up there. And now you know a little bit more about it. Guys, thanks for watching.